Hello ladies and gentlemen of YouTube, this is Magnius and welcome to the Stanley Parable. Now this game is an indie adventure exploration game published and developed by Galactic Cafe. This game is a little bit strange from the things that I've seen so far, I'm not going to give away any sort of thing, but this is actually my very first time playing it, although I have seen it on Twitch streams before. So I was sort of interested in this game, bought it for about $7, you can find a link to the Steam page below in the video description if you would like to buy it. So let's go ahead and get started. Begin the game. I did add closed captioning for all of you who may have hearing problems, as well as the fact that I just like to read closed captioning when I'm hearing things. I think it's pretty awesome. Never the end is never the end is never the end loading. That's awkward. The, uh, the loading screen is taking long enough at this point that I'm wondering if, oh no, game hasn't frozen yet. Good, good to know. I guess. Taking forever. Oh, there we go. This is the most awkward beginning to a series ever. Which, at the moment, I am thinking that I'm going to be playing this. I don't know if I'll play through, like, every scenario, because if you think about it, it could take a really long time, and who knows if I'll even find all of them. But I'll play it until I get bored, so I don't know how many episodes the series is going to be, but meh. Why not have some fun? It'll be interesting. Click. This is the story of a man named Stanley. Stanley. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. Employee number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427 and he pushed buttons on a keyboard. Orders came to him through a monitor on his desk, telling him what buttons to push, how long to push them, and in what order. This is what employee 427 did every day of every month of every year. And although others might have considered it soul rending, Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in, as though he had been made exactly for this job. And Stanley was happy. Sounds terrible. Sounds like why I quit and my then real one job. Day, something very peculiar happened. Something that would forever change Stanley. Something he would never quite forget. He had been at his desk for nearly an hour when he realized that not one single order had arrived on the monitor for him to follow. No one had showed up to give him instructions, call a meeting, or even say hi. Never in all his years at the company had this happened, this complete isolation. Something was very clearly wrong. Shocked, frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, he got up from his desk and stepped out of his office. This guy sounds a little bit slow, maybe mentally handicapped actually, he sits at his desk for a whole hour before he realizes something's amiss. I can move around, alright. Oh, if I click it makes a typing sound, but I don't have a computer. Am I... can I... Is clicking even important? I don't... 428, 429. I'm gonna take your computer, 429. All his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Is, is this the meeting room? I don't... <laughs> no matter how hard Stanley looked, he couldn't find a trace of his co-workers. Ooh. Alright, I turned off a computer. I get to go home now, right? Guys? 437? Why, why suddenly- oh, these are the other desks. Alright. I don't know where I'm going. I believe this game was made based off of, uh, or made by the same people as a Gmod game, which was... Gary's Mod? What is this? Nothing. Alright, where do I go? I want a coffee cup. I can't... Can't click anything. Where's the meeting room? When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. No. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. Did you close the door on me, Mr. Omniscient Narrator? <laughs> Uh... <sighs> yes, 
truly a room worth admiring. It had really been worth the detour after all, just to spend a few moments here in this immaculate, beautifully constructed room. Stanley simply stood here, drinking it all in. Uh, I actually do want to drink. I'm a little bit thirsty. Can you can you give me a Coke? No? Alright then. Yes. Really, really worth it being here in the room. A room so utterly captivating that even though all your co-workers have mysteriously vanished, here you sit looking at these chairs and some paintings. Really worth it. I'm glad you agree with me. You're sort of a jerk, but, eager but I to like get you. Back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. I will listen to him for now, why not? And so he detoured through the maintenance section, walked straight ahead to the opposite door, and got back on track. But what if I go down this way? I'll, I'll listen to you for now. I trust you. For now. There goes that door. Can I go this way? No, the answer is no you may not, Magnus. Hello? Tips for not Yet getting fired. there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. This... these are amazing slideshows. Take it out passively, aggressively. Broom closet? <gasps> I just opened a door! Stanley stepped God. into the broom closet, but there was nothing here, so he turned around and got back on track. No. There was nothing here. No choice to make, no path to follow, just an empty broom closet. No reason to still be here. No, I'm staying. It was baffling that Stanley was still just sitting in the broom closet. <laughs> he wasn't even doing anything. At least if there was something to interact with, he'd be justified in some way. As it is, he's literally just standing there doing sweet F.A. What does F.A. mean? Are you... are you really still in the broom closet? Standing around doing nothing? Why? Because I want Please to. offer me some explanation here. I'm, I'm genuinely confused. I don't... Why do I have to justify myself to you? This is my life, man. My life. You do realize there's no choice or anything in here, right? If I'd said Stanley walked past the broom closet, at least you would have had a reason for exploring it to find out. Stop telling me what to do. It occur to me because literally this closet is of absolutely no significance to the story whatsoever. I never would have thought to mention it. Well... It's a good thing I checked it out then, huh? Because you would have just forgotten all about it. This is somehow its own branching path. Maybe when you go talk about this with your friend, you'll say, Oh, did you get the broom closet ending? The broom closet ending was my favorite. I hope your friends find this concerning. That's exactly what I'm going to be saying. Man, this broom closet ending is my Stand favorite. and ugly and really, really stupid. He oh. probably only got the job because of a family connection. That's how stupid he is. Oh. That all with drug money. Also, Stanley is addicted to drugs. And uh, family friendly channel, dude, Mr. Narrator. Come on. Come on, man. That, that's well, completely I've unnecessary. I'm a conclusion about what's going on right now. You're dead. I'm dead? You got to this broom closet, explored it a bit, and were just about to leave because there's nothing here when a physical malady of some sort shut down your central nervous system and you collapsed on the keyboard. There's... Well, in a situation like there's, this... Oh, you mean in real life? ...to alert someone nearby so as to ensure that your body is taken care of before it begins to decompose. Are you talking about real life? Hello? Anyone who happens to be nearby? The person at this computer is dead. I'm not dead? He or she has fallen prey to any number of your countless human physiological vulnerabilities. It's indicative of the long-term sustainability of your species. Please remove their corpse from the area and instruct another human to take their place at the computer, making sure they understand basic first-person video game mechanics and filling them in on the history of narrative tropes in video gaming. 
so that the irony and insightful commentary of this game is not lost on them. You're not actually speaking very loudly. When you've done that, just step out into the hallway. No. Stop telling me what to do. I have authority issues. You want to fight? You want to fight, Mr. Narrator? If I wait long enough, he'll say something else. I know it. I can feel it in my bones. I'm just gonna hide in the corner. Should be able to tell I'm not dead. I'm moving and stuff, yo, you jerk. Really? You're not gonna say anything? At all? Alright, fine. I'll go outside. Ah, second player. It's good to have you on board. I guarantee you can't do any worse than the person who came before you. I think I can. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Fine. This is a nice office. Executive bathroom? What? Locked doors? In my story? I think not. Did you just close another door on me, man? Freaking me out, man. Is there anything important in here whatsoever? Guess not. Locked doors everywhere I go. Good to know. Oh man, this guy. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. <laughs> I am the most expensive Shocked, boss. Unraveled, Stanley wondered in disbelief who orchestrated this. What dark secret was being held from him? What he could not have known was that the keypad behind the boss's desk guarded the terrible truth that his boss had been keeping from him. And so the boss had assigned it an extra secret pin number. 2845. But of course, Stanley couldn't possibly have known this. 2845? Um, alright. Stanley just sat around twiddling his thumb. Yes, I did. Trying to input anything on the device was useless, since he could never possibly know that the combination was 2845. Two, eight, four. Stanley simply began entering <laughs> random codes into the keypad, knowing full well the sheer statistical unlikelihood that this would ever result in a correct combination. If he knew that the combo was 2845, it would be another story entirely. But no. Forgot. But it turns out <laughs> that the panel's emergency override kicked in, and the door just opened all by itself. Really? And Stanley got the hell along with the story. Well, whoop de do. Are you serious? Did you just. Did you open the door? You just opened the door without me doing anything. You're such a jerk. Nope. I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep doing numbers. You can't tell me what to do, man. I don't, I don't want to go in the door. Two, eight, four, five. Hmm? What? I hear whirring sounds. Fine, I'll go through the doors since you're not giving me any- Ooh, piano. Oh. Where am I going? This is scary, it's dark, I don't like it. Do I have to hit the big red button? I sp ah! Oh, sweet mother of God, why? Alright. Loading, loading, loading. Slowest loading game in the world. Seriously though, even, even Skyrim loads faster than this. You can do it. I believe in you. Descending deeper into the building, Stanley realized he felt a bit peculiar. It was a stirring of emotion in his chest, as though he felt more free to think for himself, to question the nature of his job. Why did he feel this now, when for years it had never occurred to him? This question would not go unanswered uh, for long. Oh, no. Okay. 
Oh god. That that was scary. Dude, that was so dark. I can't see anything. Okay, there's there's some lights. Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind, Mind Control, Control Facility. Facility. Escape? Escape. It's fine. Oh. Okay. I see a bright console. It's a giant light button, I suppose. What is this? What are these papers? The lights rose oh on God. an enormous room packed with television screens. What horrible secret did this place hold? Stanley thought to himself. Did he have the strength to find out? Probably not. Am I going this way? It looks like I am. Now the monitors jumped to life. Oh, Their true nature revealed. Each bore the number of an employee in the building. Stanley's co-workers. The lives of so many individuals reduced to images on a screen, and Stanley, one of them, eternally monitored in this place where freedom meant nothing. Where freedom meant nothing. Yes, we can, we got so, some sort of NSA stuff going on right here. That's good to know. Wait, some of them are being cancelled out with red text. Why? Oh, Jesus. Fired? Employee 104 was fired? What was I? 247? I was employed 247, right? 2247. Two, there we go. There I am. I don't look special at all. It's just a picture of a filing cabinet. What is that? Okay, what is this? This mind control facility, it was too horrible to believe it couldn't be true. Had Stanley really been under someone's control all this time? Was this the only reason he was happy with his boring job? That his emotions had been manipulated to accept it blindly? The question is, why wasn't my job automated by, like, robotic stuff or computers? It'd be far cheaper than actually paying me. No. No. He refused to believe it. He couldn't accept it. His own life in someone else's control? Never! It was unthinkable, wasn't it? Was it even possible? Where am I going? Had he truly spent his entire life utterly blind to the world? Utterly blind to the world! And here was the proof. The here, heart of uh, the, the operation. operation. Controls labeled with emotions. Happy, or sad, or content. Walking, eating, working, all of it monitored and commanded from this very place. And as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that this machinery would never again exert its terrible power over another human life. For he would dismantle the controls once and for all. Um... How? <laughs> Mind control status, offline. Uh, there's lots of colors. I see a giant red button. I don't trust it at all. I don't know what's going on. Purple and blue and green and orange. I guess, guess I have to click the giant red button and see what happens. What is this? Coffee? I like... Work? I like work. I just hate my boss. Oh, okay. I like work. I just hate my boss. Big red button? No? Did I click it? Huh? Ten tree? Beep, beep. I can't click the giant red button. I don't know what's wrong. There's so many buttons. What do I do? Five? Three? One, two... One, 
One, two, wait, what? I'm pretty, pretty sure that one, two were already over here, weren't they? No? There's three, four, I don't... I can't get out. I'm trapped. Oh, there's four up there? One, two... Four... Um... Alright then. Perhaps I should press one? It does nothing. Two? No? Okay, I'll just go to facility power, I guess. Because I clearly can't do anything in here. Where's number three? I have no idea where number three is. Mind controls idle awaiting inputs. System power. On and off. And this seems really odd. When found the source of the room's power, he knew it was his duty, his obligation, to put an end to this horrible place and to everything it stood for. What if I hit the on button instead? Uh, sure. Why not? Oh, oh Jesus! Hello? Hello? Gabe? Uh huh. Blackness and a rising chill of uncertainty. All right. Was it over? Was it over? This music's a little bit loud, guys. Yes. He had won. He had defeated the machine. Unshackled himself from someone else's command. Freedom was mere moments away. And yet, even as the immense door slowly opened. Stanley reflected on how many puzzles still lay unsolved. Where had his co-workers gone? How had he been freed from the machine's grasp? What other mysteries did this strange building hold? But as sunlight streamed into the chamber, he realized none of this mattered to him. For it was not knowledge or even power that he had been seeking, but happiness. Perhaps his goal had not been to understand, but to let go. No longer would anyone tell him where to go, what to do, or how to feel. Whatever life he lives, it will be his. And that was all he needed to know. It was, perhaps, the only thing worth knowing. Stanley stepped through the open door. What open door? I don't think this is a door. It looks very 2D to me. Stanley felt oh. the cool breeze upon his skin, the feeling of liberation, the immense possibility of the new path before him. This was exactly the way, right now, that things were meant to happen. And Stanley was happy. See, so that was one of the endings for the story, the one that I assume happens if you follow the directions of the narrator. But then it starts all over again, and you get new choices as to what to do. So for example... All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. I'm gonna go to the meeting room. Perhaps I missed a memo. And there will be like different doors open this time, and various new things will happen. You can find out more information from the story. So this time... Here... When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. But I'm not going to. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. Wow. Yes. This room. But eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. Which I will not do, because I'm pretty sure that's what I did last time. Where am I now? Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't <laughs> yeah. five years ago. Do not lie. If you are lying right now, stop. Alright.
This is a new room. We didn't see this last time. Warning, do not jump from the cargo lift while it is in motion. It will cause death. Penalty for misuse of cargo lift, $1,000. Penalty for jumping off the cargo lift, $5,000. Huh. Oh, right, do I actually die if I jump off, or...? Look, Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. I'm not your enemy, really, I'm not. I realize that investing in your trust in someone else can be difficult, but the fact is that the story has been about nothing but you all this time. What? Really? But in his oh. eagerness to prove <laughs> that he was in control of the story and no one gets to tell him what to do, Stanley leapt from the platform and plunged to his death. Good job, Stanley. Everyone thinks you are very powerful. I am powerful, thank you very much. Okay, so clearly jumping all the way down to the bottom level was the wrong idea. But there was a platform that I could have jumped on like instead. Of his hand. It was only a matter of time before he found the others, wherever they were. Just a matter of time. Huh, that's a different dialogue. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, this was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. The lounge was sublime, a work of art. What was it about this room? That's new it dialogue, so too. Deep, but eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. How about no? Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't fired years ago. Look, Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. I'm not your enemy, really, I'm not. I realize that investing in your trust in someone else can be difficult, but the fact is that the story has been about nothing but you all this time. What? Really? I was in the middle of something. Do you have zero consideration for others? Are you that convinced that I want something bad to happen to you? Why, I don't know how to convince you of this, but I really do want to help you, to show you something beautiful. Look, let me prove it. Let me prove that I'm on your side. Give me a chance. I feel so uncomfortable with this British guy trying to convince me that he's on my side. Oh, I don't, I don't trust him at all. Yeah, let's go this way. Danger everywhere. Wow. What a great sign. 2B1. What? It's not a number for an employee. 2B3. Are we in a basement? I don't... 2B5. Ugh. Alright. Now what? listen carefully, this is important. Stanley walked through the red door. Then why did you open the blue door? I don't... I don't know what to do! So many choices! Fine, we'll go through the red oh, door. Oh, thank God you are willing to listen to me. Uh -huh. You see that I really have wanted you to be happy all this time. The problem is all these choices. The two of us always trying to get somewhere that isn't here. Running and running and running, just the way you're doing right now. Don't you see that it's killing us, Stanley? I just... I want it to stop. I would... We would both be so much happier if we just... Stopped. What? And I think, well, I think I have a solution. Here, let me show you. He's gonna kill me. Oh my god. He's gonna kill me. He wants me to go into the room and die. Fine. I'll, I'll, I'll trust you, sort of. Huh? What, what just... Is that another ending? Mm. What is this? What do we want? What, what are, are we looking, looking for? for? Hmm? Is he crazy? Is, oh wait, I can move? What what the what is this? What are these lights? Huh? Stars? Aliens? I don't what Here. If we just stay right here, right in this moment, with this place, Stanley, I think I feel happy. I actually feel happy. What? This guy's crazy, man. 
What? What is this? Colorful nonsense? No, wait. wait. Where are you going? What is this? Are these dominoes? What the heck is going on? Oh no! Stay away from those stairs! If you hurt yourself, if you die, the game will reset! We'll lose all of this! Yeah, we will lose all of this. It's part of life, man. Gotta be willing to take risks. Please, no, Stanley, let me stay here! Don't, Don't take, take this me from, from me! me. Dude, why are you freaking out? You're freaking me out, man. Calm down. Oh, do I just, like, jump? Can I go in this door first? Okay, I guess I have to... Please, Stanley, think about what you're doing. Uh, this is sort of a morbid game now that I think of it. Ah! No! Oh. Oh. Thank God. You lived. No. No, no, what are you doing, Stanley? Please, I'm asking you not to take this away from me. I can't go back to what I was before. If you die, we'll both go back. Why are you doing this? I don't... Why are you freaking out, man? Stanley, let's go back to the other room. My god, is this really how much you dislike my game? That you'll throw yourself from this platform over and over to be rid of it? Oh, uh, this you is... You're literally willing to kill yourself to keep me from being happy. Am I reading the situation correctly? Or maybe you're just getting a kick out of it. I don't know anymore. I just wanted us to get along. But I guess that was too much to ask. It looks like you wanted to make a choice after all. Well, this one is yours. Oh, will I finally die? Is it over? It's going to restart, isn't it? I'm going back. <laughs> I'm going back. <laughs> oh, God. Wait. This hallway is different. This is a different hallway. This is not the hallway I was in before. What in the world? All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. This is not the same. This is different. Um, alright, so I'm freaked out, but thank you so much everyone for watching this first episode. I hope you come back for future episodes so that we can see more scenarios and endings. If you would like to buy this game, The Stanley Parable, you can find a link in the video description below to the Steam page. Thank you so much everyone for watching, my name is Magnius, and I will see you next time.